Hey everyone, keeping up with new guidelines can be a real challenge. Absolutely. But it's so important. So let's take a look at the new AHA 2024 guidelines. Okay. There are big changes to how we talk about hypertension. Right. You've probably heard hypertensive urgency and hypertensive crisis are gone. Yeah. It's more than just new words, though. This changes how we should think about acute hypertension. It really does. The old terms were confusing. They caused inconsistencies. Yeah, I can see that. One doctor might look at a blood pressure of 180 over 110 millimeters of mercury and say it's an urgency. Okay. Another doctor might call that same blood pressure a crisis. Mm. We relied too heavily on a single blood pressure reading. We weren't always considering a patient's symptoms or potential organ damage. Yeah, I remember feeling unsure sometimes about which category a patient fit into. Exactly. So the 2024 guidelines take a different approach. They focus on risk stratification. Okay. That means looking at the patient's risk for complications. And we base that on the presence or absence of target organ damage. So the question isn't just, how high is the blood pressure? Right. The question is, is the high blood pressure harming the body? That makes sense. Can you tell us more about target organ damage? What are the signs we should be looking for? Sure. Target organ damage means high blood pressure is already affecting the organs. Like what organs? This could be the brain, the heart, kidneys, or the vessels. We need to be on the lookout for signs of damage in these areas. So what are some specific examples of damage we should be looking for? Let's start with the brain. For example, if high blood pressure is affecting the brain, a patient might have an altered mental status. Uh -huh. They might have vision problems or even seizures. Oh, wow. Now, in the cardiovascular system, high blood pressure can cause chest pain, shortness of breath, right. or signs of heart failure. Makes sense. With the kidneys, we need to assess for kidney dysfunction. And in the vascular system, aortic dissection is a big one. Oh, yeah. Aortic dissection, that's a serious situation that needs immediate action. You're absolutely right. So under the new guidelines, there are two categories based on the presence or absence of target organ damage. Okay. The first category is with target organ damage. This means the high blood pressure is already causing harm. We need to treat it aggressively and right away. Okay. So that's similar to what we used to call a hypertensive emergency. Exactly. The second category is without target organ damage. So in these cases, we don't see evidence of harm yet. But even without organ damage, we still need to watch these patients carefully, right? Absolutely. Just because there's no visible organ damage doesn't mean a patient is in the clear. Some of these patients may still be at very high risk, so we need to monitor them closely and treat them in a timely manner to prevent any problems. I see. So we're being proactive. Right, we are. It's about preventing further complications. This new approach seems a lot clearer. What other benefits do these new guidelines offer? Well, for one, there's more clarity. We're all on the same page now, which improves communication between healthcare providers. That leads to better, more personalized care. We're considering each patient's unique situation and risk factors. So we're treating the person, not just the number. Exactly. And this approach also helps us to better allocate our resources. We can make sure patients who need it most, like those with target organ damage, get immediate and aggressive treatment. That makes a lot of sense. So the AHA 2024 guidelines have moved away from the terms urgency and crisis, and instead we're identifying target organ damage and stratifying patients based on their individual risk. You got it. It's a much more nuanced and patient-centered approach to managing high blood pressure in acute settings. And that ultimately means each patient gets the right care at the right time. Precisely. So now that we've talked about the changes in terminology and the importance of target organ damage, let's dive into the treatment recommendations. What should we do when a patient presents with markedly elevated blood pressure? What happens when a patient comes in with really high blood pressure and they have signs of target organ damage? Then we need to act fast. We have to lower the blood pressure quickly to limit any more damage. Right. So what's the goal? How much do we need to lower it and how fast? It depends on the patient and how serious the situation is. Okay. But in general, we want to bring the mean arterial pressure down by about 10 to 20 percent. Okay. And we try to do that within the first hour. Got it. Then we continue to lower it gradually over the next 24 to 48 hours. So which medications do we use for that? Well, it depends. It depends on the kind of target organ damage, the patient's medical history, and any potential drug interactions. Uh -huh. But in these urgent situations, we usually go with intravenous medications. Why is that? Because they work quickly, and we can easily adjust the dose as needed makes sense. So what are some examples of intravenous medications that we might use? Some common ones are nitroprusside, nicarbapine, clavidipine, labetalol, esmolol. Okay. They all work a little differently and each one has its own considerations. So it's important to choose the right medication for each patient. What about patients who have high blood pressure, but they don't show any signs of organ damage yet? 
How do we approach treatment for them? We still need to see them promptly, but the urgency might not be as high. Okay. We'd start with a thorough evaluation to get a good understanding of their overall health and try to figure out what might be contributing to their high blood pressure. So even though they're not showing signs of organ damage, we still can't just ignore it. Right, exactly. We need to rule out any hidden risks and make sure we're not missing anything. So what might that involve? It depends on the patient, but we might order some lab tests, an electrocardiogram, maybe even some imaging studies. So it's really about individualizing the approach. Absolutely. Now, what about medication for these patients? Would we still use intravenous medications? Not necessarily. For this group, oral medications are often the first choice okay. since the situation is less urgent. Makes sense. And I imagine there are a lot of different oral antihypertensive medications to choose from. There are, yeah. And they each has different mechanisms of action and side effect profiles. So again, it's about tailoring the treatment plan to the individual patient's needs and medical history. You got it. The important thing is to manage the high blood pressure appropriately, even if we don't see any organ damage yet, to help prevent any future complications. That makes sense. So it sounds like we're moving away from a one-size-fits-all approach and really focusing on what each patient needs. Exactly. It's all about personalized care, a comprehensive assessment, and considering the patient's individual risk factors and clinical presentation. This has been such a helpful conversation. I feel like I have a much better grasp on these guidelines now. I'm glad to hear that. So just to recap, what are the key takeaways? Well, we talked about target organ damage, uh -huh. the importance of risk stratification, and providing individualized care. And of course, we need to continue learning and staying informed. Always. And to keep refining our practice as new information emerges. Thanks for joining us today. It's been a pleasure discussing the AHA 2024 Hypertension Guidelines with you. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.